girl a running in a group. She had a high speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. She's my hot rod. My buddy, my buddy, Elon Musk. He has raised hopes for obtaining the Warren, Ohio plant slated for closing by General Motors. There's one that's going to close. But GM says that the plan's fate depends on the UAW talks next year. So what do you think about that? You think maybe these plant closings and all this other foo-for-all might be a smokescreen to get the UAW to take a pay cut? They're making more money than they ever did right now. The economy is booming. They're selling cars like crazy. And they're trying to stick it to the American worker. <laughs> I think this is all over. I can't believe that that was the answer. When, when, the UA, uh, when Elon Musk said he wanted to look into buying that Warren, Ohio plant, he was going to probably build his Teslas there or something. You never know with Elon. He might be building go-karts. The guy's got, he's like a, uh, yeah, he's not, he's, he's not very stable. But anyway. And now uh, General Motors says, well, it all depends on, the, the fate of that plant depends on the union negotiations next year, which is now, 2019. We're in 2019. What does that tell you? They weren't going to close that plant. They just want the union to take a cut and pay. They want to stick it to the union, stick it to you and me, just like they always do. Oh, well, I mean, it, nothing we can do about it. I got to tell you, it's high time we got to talk about this. High technology has jumped up and bit us, and it's here. Believe me, two years from now, you're not going to recognize the car that you're driving, and you're not going to understand half the features in it or how it works half the time. I still have people that come into me and tell me, oh, my God, I step on the brake, and it goes, Arr! and it was, well, was it wet out? Well, yeah. Well, if you start to skid, the anti-lock brake system kicks in, and that's what it sounds like. Oh, they didn't know. Nobody explains this stuff to the consumer when they buy a car. Okay? Nobody says anything to them. And the anti like brake light comes on and it goes, because it's pumping the brakes for you so you don't skid side sideways. So you stay straight. Anti like brakes, you got to love them. They saved my can one time. So there's all kinds of stuff that's out there now that a lot of people don't understand. But it's going to get worse. It's going to get real, real bad. Not so bad. I mean, it's good. Technology's good. Cars are going to be safer. Cars are going to be better. But trying to get the public educated is not going to be that easy. Not everybody sits behind a computer all day, okay, and understands computer speak. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about this, and we're going to talk about technology, the new technology. And the first thing we got to discuss, where we got to start is AI. Yeah, auto. Artificial intelligence. Ooh -hoo. Artificial intelligence is the virtual backbone of all things high-tech. Techopedia defines AI as an area of computer science that creates intelligent machines that work and act like humans. <laughs> okay. Now, well, sounds bizarre, huh? This. To put in old car guy terms, they're trying to stuff a human brain into a computer box to run your car. A concept that was strictly sci-fi. Until now, that is. <laughs> okay? But I want to ask you. Artif well, artificial intelligence. I want to ask you a question in a minute. Artificial intelligence will make machines that they make more sense than your brother-in-law, of course, and they react and correct almost any situation correctly. No more trial and error. No more plan Bs. No second opinions. Big brother has the right answer and solution just for you. No more on-the-job training. The robots will take care of that for you. Now, I want to ask you, To have this, to have a computer that has these thought processes and this, someone has to program it, okay? A box with a machine in it and a bunch of electrical cannot think. It has to be programmed to think. And is there a protocol for this? 
or are we at the mercy of the guy putting the input in? So our computer is going to think like him. <laughs> not us, him. We're not going to put anything in. I'm not going to sit down and type in my, my likes and dislikes or what I want to do or how I would handle a situation or an emergency. Are we going to be stuck with this? This artificial intelligence it still has to be programmed. Whose brain is going in that box? Certainly not mine. You'll no longer be able to take the scenic route home to where anywhere, to wherever you're going. The shortest, most energy efficient path will be followed. And sure, and for sure, to my buddies out there, okay, from the car clubs, no more street racing. That's against the rules, you know. So you won't be allowed to do that anymore. You're going to have governor, you'll have... <laughs> uh, and guys will find a way around it, I'm glad. But I don't get it. Why do we have... Artificial intelligence sounds great to me. And it, it sounds like it could really be the future. But whose brain is it thinking like? Is there a protocol? Does the government set up a set of rules and regulations that have to be programmed into these cars? So that when someone comes this way, you swerve that way, or you know, <laughs> I don't understand. Who's whose brain is it? Someone has to do the input. That computer didn't. They didn't plug that thing in, and it started thinking for itself. Not not really. There has to be a protocol. If you want to stop at a fast food restaurant on the way home, will com the computer sense your weight in the driver's seat and say no? <laughs> if I decide to stop off and see my pals at the bar, will the computer time me? <laughs> Look, I know. A artificial intelligence is the way of the future. And maybe computers can, start, can make better decisions. Maybe they can. More rational. Especially more rational. But where does it, when does it stop and let me be me and let me drive? Or does it? <laughs> I don't know. I have a problem. I have a problem with artificial intelligence as it applies to the automotive driving world. Not the automotive repair, not the automotive assembly. Uh, I have no problem with any of that. But the actual driving and the situations that come up while driving, we all handle them differently. We don't all think the same. And the car's going to think for us. Okay, well, good. If they put that protocol in there, Who's pro, who's th whose brain is thinking? It's not you or I, and we're behind the wheel. It's somebody that said, well, if this happens and this happens, then you have to do this. Okay, good, common sense. It's programmed in the computer, and that's what's going to happen. When That's what the car is going to do. Not what you would do, but what somebody who, whoever put that in there would do. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. We need to talk about the safety features that the artificial intelligence, or AI, has already given us. And it's good stuff. There's a couple more coming, too. But this is, check this out. Adaptive cruise control. You all think about cruise control, you set it, and you're driving on the highway. No, 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 no. The new adaptive cruise control, this system uses sensors and radar to lock onto the vehicle in front of yours and keep a safe distance and adapt to changing speeds by applying, by applying the brake or accelerator accordingly. Now, that kind of thing is programmed into that computer. If this is, you know, it's easy to say. This car slows down, you slow down. You keep a safe distance. You could put on the brake or put on the gas. And whatever, and if you set the cruise control at 65, it'll go to 65 and stop. And the car in front of you doesn't matter then, whether he speeds up or not. If you get too close, it'll start slowing down. In which case, you'll know you'll have to get over and get around them. That's a great feature. That's a great feature, and it's, it should be that way, especially on the highway. And FYI, this is going to be a forerunner for autonomous driving, this whole adaptive cruise control. But there is a good example of artificial intelligence. It takes what it sees and calculates what it has to do. And remember, again, I'm going to tell you, somebody had to program that in there. Now, if I would, if I, if I like to stay six vehicle, uh, six car lengths behind the guy, but the guy doing the programming only likes to stay four car lengths, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to feel like I'm tailgating. Let me just tell you. 
automatic emergency braking. Another great feature, just a great feature. This is a feature that more and more shoppers are looking for when buying a new car or truck. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in a study determined that, a, that the rear end collisions go down 50% on vehicles with this safety device. And again, this is ready. For, this is a free view to, to uh, autonomous driving. So if you don't have a, a, adaptive cruise control in your vehicle, you might have automatic emergency braking. Lexus had it. was one of the first ones to have it. If you have a, I don't know, 2010, 2011, 2012 Lexus, it was an option, but they had a problem. As they were on the highway going around curves and doing their thing, certain guardrails set it off, and the car started to stop, <laughs> okay? It's because the guardrail metal, the metal in the guardrail was, uh, that's a bit much. Lane departure warning. A warning sound or buzzer, a warning buzzer or sound, will sound or buzz, <laughs> who wrote this, in your seat or steering wheel to let you know you are drifting across white lines, unintentionally leaving your lane. And on certain models, it will steer you back gently. This is a good option for tired drivers, I guess, or people that try to eat while they're driving, or you know, look for the look for your phone, or that's still. Eh? I, it's a good. De it's it's a, a standard option now on most cars. Blind spot detection. This is magnificent. This is an option I think should have been a long time ago. Small orange or yellow lights will blink in your side view mirrors if something is sliding up behind you or the dreaded blind spot alongside you. That makes your decision to get over real easy. Yes or no. You see those blinking lights? There's somebody there. Don't. How many times have you started to get over and there was somebody there and you didn't know it? Because there is a blind spot. I don't care if you've got a blind spot mirror. There's still a blind spot. Trust me. Rearview camera. Eh, cars have had these for a while. My car has it, okay? My rearview camera, and not exactly it's a new system, but it's one that many new car buyers are now insisting on. The camera gives the driver a look at exactly what's behind his vehicle and protects pedestrians and animals from getting run over, of course. Now, the, the hindsight, or the eyesight on this, or the hindsight, the new cameras that are they're doing now in 2019 have 180 degree capability so they can see quite a ways back there left and right if there's somebody coming behind you something a kid on a bicycle whatever for backing up i'm telling you what i personally love the backup camera in my ford edge i just love it and now coming soon to a vehicle near you safety exit assist huh, this is something we need trust me the system will prevent passengers from opening a door when vehicles or bicycles are approaching on the side. It's going to be an extension of the blind spot monitor that we just talked about and is expected to be quite in demand, especially among drivers with children. How many times have you pulled up and told your kids, don't open that door, there's a car coming or there's somebody on a bicycle coming. You pull to this curb, you know, you're getting out, you're going to go see Aunt S My S Sally or Martha and guess what? <laughs> you don't want them getting out of the car. They get out of the draw the street side. Don't get out on the grass side. You know, that's what I do, but not everybody does, and their kids sometimes just bash out of the car. They won't let it out. They won't let them out. This new thing will not let them out of the car. Pretty cool. Now, this this is this is something I was kind of far-fetched. I want to know who programmed this. Who who decides what's what on this one? Facial recognition software. This is already, they already have this on the new Subaru Forester. It was shown at the recent New York Auto Show. And it's a camera that sends pictures of the driver's face to the computer, which, using artificial intelligence, senses the operator's level of alertness and will warn when it sees you are not paying attention, like texting. I'm fairly certain you'll see many more variations of this in the future. And, well, resulting in restrictions if the computer decides to ground you. <laughs> so in other words, if you get in and you're pie-eyed, nope, no driving for you. Or if you get in and you're half asleep, nope, no driving for you. I don't know why, but I, I have this thing about texting. I don't know why they don't just eliminate cell phones or signal in the car altogether. So texting and driving, 
You don't have to worry about it. They can't do it. That's the way it should be. I don't know how many times I've gotten up behind somebody at a green light and sat there for 30 seconds after the light changed so they could finish their text message. Well, I, I, I tend to lay on the horn, and she who will be obeyed gets all upset. Oh, George. I said, you know what? That's not the way it should be. This artificial intelligence, this is good stuff. We got some really good messages coming up, but you're going to have stuff on your car that you're not going to understand. And if they don't explain it to you, when you're when they sell you the car, you're going to be driving down the road and you're going to look for you dropped a quarter or something. And you're going to be looking for it, and the car will start to veer. Next thing you know, it'll go ding, 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 and the car will veer itself back. And you're going to say, "What the heck happened here?" It's a good feature. It's going to stop a lot of accidents. It's going to stop a lot of a lot of different things. The stop the self braking, this automatic automatic braking, believable. It's going to be great. The determinations are self breaking is something that actually doesn't require that much artificial intelligence because all you do is put a sensor there and you mark this this close to a vehicle stop that's pretty much easy but you got to put in the the determined amount of distance that you want